How are we doing? Um, let's uh, start with questions from homeworks. Does anybody have anything? Ava? Three? Sure. And Joy, I saw you. You're next. All right, uh, so our directions here say find the exact values using the sum and difference formulas. Uh, number three, we're given our angle measure in radians. My first order of business will be to convert from radians into degrees. Not that you can't do it with radians, but like, well, it's just way easier to turn it into degrees. So the pies cancel, 12 goes into 180 15 times, 5 times 15 is 75. So tan of 5 pi over 12 is really the same thing as tan of 75. So I'm going to go to my unit circle, like the back page of our sheet. I'm going to find two angles that either add to 75 or subtract to 75. Probably the two most obvious would be to use 30 and 45 as an addition problem. Once I've done that, I'm going to go flip over to the front side of my identity sheet and locate um, the sum of, or the angle sum identity for tangent, which is SD5. So that says it will be tan of 30 degrees plus tan of 45 degrees divided by 1 minus tan of 30 degrees times tan of 45 degrees. Once I've gotten that written down, I'm going to flip my identity sheet back over. And I'm going to use the unit circle to figure out what tan of 30 and tan of 45 is. So I'll locate 30 degrees on my unit circle. And I know that tan is y over x. So the y at 30 degrees is 1 half. And the x is root 3 over 2. And then I'm going to locate 45 degrees on the unit circle. And again, tan is y over x. So y is root 2 over 2, and x is also root 2 over 2. So far, so good. I'm going to now do some reducing. pause here and let everybody that's kind of following along catch up. Ava, does this feel okay to where I've gotten to? Um, I'm going to go ahead and multiply the 1 over root 3 and the 1 together. So I'm just going to erase the 1. Now when I look at this answer, there's two things I don't like about this answer. What are the two things? Yeah, I have fractions inside of fractions, yuck, and then I have radicals in the denominator, right? Let's take care of the fraction inside of fraction part first. So to get rid of that, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by root 3. So when I do that, I get 1 plus root 3 over root 3 minus 1. Happy there? You're not happy? What's, the, what's up, Ava? Right. No, I'm just saying with that, happy with that step. 
Yes, we, we already identified there are two things wrong. We're gonna have to take care of both of them in sequence. We got rid of the fractions inside of fractions first. Now we have to deal with the radical and the denominator. You're absolutely right. So we're not happy happy. I just meant happy with the step happy. Um, so to get rid of the square root 3 in the denominator, what do we need to do? We're going to multiply by the what's called the conjugate. That's the word you're searching for. So that's going to be the same thing as our denominator just with the opposite sign in the middle. So instead of root three minus one, we're gonna multiply the top and bottom by root three plus one. Okay, now I gotta foil that stuff out, but I notice that the bottom is just a difference of two squares factoring pattern. So I'm going to use that to just shortcut through having to do the FOIL. Now, if you forget that multiplication pattern, you can FOIL it out. You can end up with the same thing, I promise. A minus B times A plus B equals A squared minus B squared. Because this is like A and B. Go ahead. So I'm use, I like to use that quite frequently when doing this because it just like cuts through some of the riffraff and gets me to write to what I want. The numerator, though, I have to FOIL. So what do I get? I get root 3 plus root 3 squared plus uh, 1 plus another root 3. Okay. So... The squares cancel the square roots. And then in the bottom, I have 3 minus 1, so that's going to be 2. In the top, I have 3 plus 1, that's 4. And then if I take one root 3 and I add another root 3 to it, how many root 3s do I have? Two root 3s. And then I'll notice that I can reduce this because if I write this as two separate fractions with, common de with the same common denominator, well, 4 over 2 is just 2, and 2 root 3 over 2 is just root 3. So that should be my answer. I'm going to point out to you that this is checkable on our calculator. We didn't mention this last time. I realized after you left that I should have mentioned this. So to check this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do tan of 5 pi over 12 with my calculator in radian mode. And then I'm going to type in 2 plus root 3 and see if I get the same decimal from both of them. So make sure I'm in radian mode. I am. So if I do tan of 5 pi divided by 12, I get that decimal. And 2 plus root 3, same decimal. Who's pretty sure we got the right answer? Everybody else that didn't raise your hand, Shima. Um, Ava. Are you happy with what we did here? Okay. Hi. All right. Uh, Joey, did you have a question from this too? Okay. This was a lot of hoops to jump through on this one, right? But... In general, this went okay for those of you that started doing stuff? Good. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's pick up where we left off. So we've done... Sum and difference and power reducings, right? 
We still have to talk about half angles. Let's do some of those. Um, So let's say we want to use the direction, say, use half angle identities to find the exact value of 75 degrees. So my first order of business is to rewrite 75 as half of some angle. Half of what angle is 75? Okay, let me rephrase it. What's 2 times 75? 150, right? So cosine of 75 is the same thing as cosine of 150 divided by 2. Now I'm going to look at the page 2 of my identity sheet, look at my half angle identities, find the one for cosine. So that's going to be plus or minus. And then what is x in this case? One fifty. Everybody okay here? All right. So Next up, I'm going to go to my unit circle and figure out what cosine of 150 is. I go to my unit circle. What is cosine of 150? Excellent. So far, so good. What don't I like about this? I got that fraction inside of a fraction here, right? To get rid of that, what do I have to do? Not the conjugate. That's going to be if I have a radical in the denominator, right? You say multiply by 2 over 2, right? Almost. Why not 2 over 2? It's under a radical, right? I can't multiply a number outside of a radical into a number that's under a radical. So what do I have to do? Yeah, I'm just going to do that. Easy fix, right? Everything works the same way. Yes. Oh, that's the half angle identity for cosine. That's H2. Yep, on page two, the last set of identities. So again, nothing complicated here, right? We're just, you know, like just write it in the form that it tells you to, like as a half angle or power reducing or sum or difference. Find the appropriate identity, plug your numbers in, go to your unit circle, do some simplifying. We're going to be done. Now, we're not quite finished with this one yet. What don't I? St what's still a problem with our answer here? You technically have a radical in the denominator, right? Because that radical is over the entire fraction. So you can think about it like this instead. But look at how lovely that is. 
Do I even need to worry about it? Why not? Because the square root of four is just, it's just two. So I don't have to do anything fancy to it. I'm just gonna simplify the radical, right? I don't have to worry about multiplying by conjugates or any nasty stuff like that. It just, two. Now, one last thing we have to do is figure out the plus or minus piece. Now remember, what we're dealing with is cosine of 75. Seventy-five is located. Seventy-five degrees is located in what quadrant on the unit circle? No, seventy-five is half of one fifty. The original problem is cosine of seventy-five, right? Oh, so you take I take the original problem, not one fifty. I care about the seventy-five that we started with. That's in quadrant one, right? So if I do my all silly turtles crawl, cosine is positive or negative in the first quadrant. Positive. So I dump the minus from the plus or minus. There's my answer. And again, if we wanted to check this, change my calculator mode to degrees, if I do cosine of 75, that's that number. And I do radical 2 minus root 3 over 2. Same number. Who's convinced we have the right answer? Everybody should be, right? Mary, certainly. Okay. Uh, cautions you guys don't forget this last step to decide whether it's a plus or minus it's always going to be looking at the original problem figuring out what quadrant the angle is and then using all silly turtles crawl to decide whether this should be positive or negative yes sir uh, yeah so I'm just worried about where cosine of 75 is positive or negative. So 75 degrees is in the first quadrant. In the first quadrant, cosine is always positive. So my answer should be positive rather than negative. Let's do another example of this because we have this extra last step at the end, um, which can make life a little bit tricky. So let's say we're doing 9 pi over 8. We're in radians. What should I do as my first step? Yeah, convert it to degrees. So pi's cancel. Um, 180, that's 4 times. Look, come on, dummy. Uh, 45. You know, like nine times 45 is just too early in the morning for me. So 405 divided by two. Now, could I turn that into a decimal? Sure, but what do I really want? I want it as a half angle anyways. Is 405 over two in the form that I want? <laughs> yeah. So I'm not gonna mess around anymore with that. I'm like, oh, perfect, 405 over two. It's exactly what I want. Uh, I mean, you can always make the decimal, you know. Most of the time, it probably wouldn't probably come out to a whole number. Yeah, 
Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There shouldn't be anything like super sneaky to happen here. Even if you convert it to a decimal, then like, oh, multiply it by two and put it over two. End up right back here. Um, so uh, let's go to our half angle identities. Which one do I want? Since it's sine, I want H1. So that's going to be plus or minus square root 1 minus cosine of 405 divided by 2. Everybody's okay there? Now, what do you notice? Normal next step would be go to the unit circle to find cosine of 405. What's the problem there, though? It's not a unit circle angle. What should I do with it? Subtract 360, find an angle coterminal to that. So that's 45. That is a unit circle angle. If I go to the unit circle, what is cosine of 45 degrees? Excellent, root two over two. Uh, we got that fraction side of fraction thing. What do I gotta do to take care of it? Yeah, multiply by root two over two. It's gonna be two minus root two over four. And I notice that that denominator is a perfect square. Notice that I'm being pretty careful about my radical there. So like here I'm careful to write my radical so it's clear that the denominator is included. And then the next step I'm clear, make it really careful to write my radical so that the denominator is no longer included. Neatness is going to count there a little bit, kiddos. I have to be able to tell whether that radical is over the denominator or not. So some of us that are a little bit sloppy with our penmanship. Just be careful on that spot. Um, and the last step then is to decide whether I need the positive or negative, right? So here I'm going to take the 405 divided by 2. Oops, this is a sign though, right? And really, I want to turn that into 202.5. I really want that as just the angle, right? Everybody's okay? What quadrant is 202.5 degrees in? That's Q3, yep, because it's bigger than 180 degrees, but still less than 270. So if we do all silly turtles crawl, sine in the third quadrant is negative. And I'm done. How do you guys feel? So like 90, 180, 202 has to be somewhere down here. So in this quadrant, T tangent is positive, but sine and cosine are negative. So remember the letter is telling you what's positive in that quadrant. A just stands for all of them. But that's the gist of it. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah, I think this is probably okay. I'd like you guys to do 23 through 26 and uh, worksheet one, which again, I think has 10 problems on it or something. It's not, okay, it's 18 problems on it. Um, but uh, that's all I wanted to do today. So lots of time to get to started on stuff. Next Sunday, yep.
Is everybody cool? All right. If you get stuck on something, you want to check answers, feel free to come on by. You can ask. Otherwise, I'm just going to kind of get out of your way and let you guys uh, do some practice, right? Uh, oh, well, I should say this, guys. Uh, this is it for Chapter 6. This is all I want you to be able to do. Well, I want to, I'm going to, this is what I want to talk about here for a minute, okay? Would you rather do this skill along with the next chapter in just one test? Okay, that's fine. We'll do that. We'll, we'll combine six and seven together and just make that one test. How long is chapter six, seven? Uh, three sections or something. It's not very long. Oh, yeah. I think it I think it'll be fine. I don't think it's gonna make the test like insanely long. Be to do it either way, but I don't have like the worksheet would essentially be your review. Yeah, I mean I, I'm happy to have the conversation. Whatever you guys want to do, it doesn't make much difference to me. This one, this one's kind of easy. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're okay. So six and seven together. That's what we want to do. Well, I think I think what Luke is saying is if this stuff is kind of easy, which is kind of the consensus, doing a test quick and just having it done, that's like an easy test grade in. Right to start. Well, be, it, I mean, the test would be like next class. Well, I I'm I'm just not ready. Yeah, my brain's like that. I still like warm up a little bit. Okay, that's fine. I just I mean, I'm gonna tell you the test is would look ostensibly like a shorter version of worksheet one. That's what the test is gonna be, which is it's gonna just be a shorter version of worksheet one. That's like all I would ask. Six, maybe? It's a test grade. Yeah. Yes. What's up? Well, remember, like, you have a doubled high test score. Right? So like if there's a super easy test in there. That's the way I'd be looking at it as a student. I've been like, this is easy, but again, like it's quick. It's a quick turnaround, but like, I don't know.